Hi, this is Linda with No Frills ASMR. I thought today we could talk about kitchen fires. This came up because a friend of mine was telling me that her daughter was cooking and got, you know, a small fire. I guess it was in the um, toaster oven. And they have like a pan or something. So she panicked and didn't really know what to do. So she grabbed the pan out of the toaster oven and threw it in the dishwasher and closed the dishwasher. <laughs> and then it burnt more in there and actually melted some plastic in the dishwasher. And to that I say, that's kind of half smart. I mean, at least she put it in a contained environment where it could be closed off. But why wouldn't you put it in the stove? <laughs> that can handle heat. But anyway, so it made me think about it a little bit. And I thought, let's let's just discuss small kitchen fires. I'm not a uh, fire marshal or a experienced safety expert. I'm just a person <laughs> who I cook a lot. Um, I've been cooking for years. I've definitely had some kitchen fires in my own kitchen. It happens. And I'm pretty careful, actually. But knowing what to do is really important because it's easy to panic. Because fires are scary and grease fires are extra scary because they go up really fast and kind of big. And, you know, it could easily catch other things in your house on fire. So um, I thought we could talk about if you have a small contained fire, what, what you could do. <clears throat> First of all, if the fire is bigger than, you know, it, and you feel out of control, call 911. That's or whatever it is in your country, but here in the U.S., 911, and say, I got a fire, and get out of the house. I mean, if it's that big, you don't want to be, those things will spread. So this is much smaller scale that I'm talking about. So the number one thing you should do, oh, <laughs> and I have this card. I used to have this framed with some other cards in my kitchen, and it is a picture of a woman who has a refrigerator full of food, and it says, make your own damn dinner. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I actually cook for my family every night. So I don't, it doesn't really, <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Anyway. All right. <clears throat> so the number one thing, if you're cooking with grease in particular, don't leave stove unattended. That's pretty important. I mean, if you've got like a chili on the stove and it's on low heat and it's just sort of bubbling away, you can probably, you're fine to go in the living room and watch football. It's not going to do anything. But if you're cooking with grease, like a steak, a hamburger, um, you've poured some vegetable oil into cooked chicken, any kind of grease, you don't ever want to leave that unattended. You got to be right there by it the whole time. So that I would say is the first thing. And then in your kitchen, you should have a, uh, class K, which I think stands for kitchen. I never thought about it. Um, fire extinguisher. Oh boy, I got a spell extinguisher. <laughs> X ding. But I have lately, and I watched a couple of videos about this recently because it kind of caught my eye. They have a thing called a fire blanket. And I admit, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I would never want to run my fire extinguisher unless it was so, so bad. Just because they make a mess. They really can make a huge mess. But a fire blanket is kind of interesting. You just take it and you flop it over whatever is on fire and it just immediately puts it out. <clears throat> so I don't know if any of you guys have one or know anything about it, but this I've been seeing on like <laughs> Facebook shorts. <laughs> I 
So maybe they're garbage. I don't know. I have to look into this more. But I asked my husband about it because he loves, like, safety. He was an Eagle Scout, you guys know. And he said, yeah, he thinks they're probably good. So I might order one of these. I don't know how much they are. But right now I have a glass cave fire extinguisher just in case. Also, when I put a, um, <laughs> this is a little side note. In my kitchen, I had cabinets on this wall. Here, okay, let's say my kitchen's like this. So I had cabinets here and cabinets here. And I took down all the cabinets here and the microwave because, well, that's a different story. I got rid of the microwave. But so I have my stove here. And then a little, and I put up shelves where I have all my Pyrex displayed. <laughs> And this wall, when we redid it, I, we repainted it, and we bought fireproof paint. And we painted that whole back wall with fireproof paint <laughs> so that a grease fire won't start there. That seemed real smart. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, so what did we do? Fire extinguisher and blanket. Um, this kind of goes beyond just... Um, you know, fire safety. This is safety in general. Let's pretend this is your stove and here are your burners. Okay, this is the front of the stove. Heading this direction. Front. All right, when you have a pan on the stove, make sure the handle is facing, well, towards the stove or towards the back of the stove. But don't ever let your handle be facing this direction because it'll be hanging out. Because if you have a your handle, like this is your stove, and you have this here, if a kid walks by, if an adult walks, if anybody walks by, they could knock into it. A child could come up and grab it. A dog could, you know, bounce up and hit it. And then this hot oil is just going to spill out all over somebody. So always, and I don't care what you're cooking, always have your handle this way. And once you get used to it, because I still see my boys holding it like this. And I'm like, no. But once you get used to holding it this way, you will never even think of holding it this way anymore. And this is just, it's dangerous. Yeah, even if you trip and fall... You know, this could come fly this way. At least it's going straight back on your stove. <sighs> yeah, I caught one of my boys doing that recently. I was like, no, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, okay. So that's an important tip. Um, anytime you're cooking in any kind of pan, try to make sure you have a lid for that pan and you have it accessible. And if you don't have a lid, then maybe get some tin foil, something like that, that you know you can fit on top of whatever it is you're cooking in, in case of an emergency. So like, if this started to get a fire on it real quick, I could run and grab this lid and just pop it right on there. And that will suffocate the grease fire. Um, now, sometimes the world's not a perfect place you've forgotten to get a lid or you don't have the lid because you got the pot from college and whatever. <laughs> or you're cooking in a toaster oven, you know, and it's just one of those little pants like my neighbor's daughter. So you get a little grease fire. And it, this is assuming, like I said, it's a contained smaller fire. Then what you can do, should I tell you what you shouldn't do first or what you should do? What you do not want to do ever, ever, is put water on it. If you put water on a grease fire, it's going to spl splatter back at you and you will burn the heck out of yourself. And sometimes that even happens when you have grease and you throw like wet chicken in or something, it'll just splatter at you. But if you put it on a grease fire, it's really gonna do that. So don't do that. And this is a tricky one because what you can do and what you do want to do is put baking soda on it. But what you do not want to do is put baking powder on it. If you have a small grease fire, you can douse it 
just a lot of it in either salt or baking soda. And those will extinguish the fire. Um, baking soda really works. This is what I almost always use. If I have a smallish fire, I will just douse it in baking soda. But don't accidentally grab baking powder because that will not put it out and maybe make it worse. Okay, so salt or baking soda. And no water. Um, extinguish with a lid or something to cover it completely and suffocate it. Baking soda. Do I say soda? I don't know if I do. I used to say soda because Michigan, but I don't know if I still do that. Uh, salt. If the fire that you have has happened within your stove, so it's in, or I should say inside the oven. So, you know, the oven is the part that the door is on and it's inside. So let's say you were cooking steaks or something and grease got down below onto the burners and now you've got a little fire there. And this is something I've had happen. What you want to do is turn the stove off completely so it's, you know, turned off. And that way you don't have heat source coming at it anymore. And then close the oven tight and don't open it to look in it. <laughs> Just close it, and that should suffocate that fire. Now, if it gets bigger or keeps going, now you need your fire extinguisher or call 911. But generally, you turn off the heat source, turn off the stove, close it up, and it'll suffocate it. The problem with, like, what happened to my friend's daughter, she had a toaster oven, and a lot of times those aren't sealed. And I've had this happen, too. I've had more fires than I thought in my kitchen. <laughs> But I've been cooking for a lot of years. But they don't have like a real tight seal. So I can totally see how like if that pan or anything or even the underneath got grease, it, even if you closed it, it might not suffocate it. So in that case, what I would do is pull out the baking soda and just put it. I mean, this will put it out right away. It'll just it'll go away. I don't think I've ever actually tried salt on a fire because baking soda works really well for me so I've always used that or just the lid you just put a lid on it um I'm trying to think is there anything else <laughs> yeah like I said the problem with the fire extinguisher it can make a mess so I am very curious about this fire blanket hmm, I don't know uh oh I know there was one other thing I just saw my other prop here I wanted to tell you don't have anything on your stove that's flammable and I know a lot of people like to keep a towel or something sort of here between their burners that makes me crazy nervous I wouldn't do that and also hanging on the handle at the front of your stove oh no I got that sometimes I don't know <laughs> I would just not have anything flammable right near your burners. Um, yeah. I, this makes me nervous. When people have towels hanging on their stove handle, which I think is kind of old-fashioned. I don't know if people still do that, but that, I don't know. <laughs> makes Just because a kid could grab them and pull them and open the stove. You got to really watch kids in your stove. I My belief is teach them, teach them right away. Start really young, just if they get anywhere near your stove. I mean, I know people don't like yelling at their kids, but I'd be like, no. Because, <laughs> you know, safety is the utmost priority. And if I make a kid feel bad because I yelled at them for safety's sake, that's life. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't, I wouldn't keep anything flammable anywhere near here. Because um, something like this gets grease on it and catches on fire. Now you got a bigger problem. You know, this could be a trickier thing to put out. So just don't keep that near there. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I hope I didn't forget anything important. Hmm. Yeah, do not leave a grease, especially 
uh, stove unattended. I mean, if you're cooking a hamburger, don't st hamburger is the greasiest. And even outside on a grill, you can get a fire, um, which is not as bad because you're outside. But sometimes people have grills close to their house. Um, if you shut the grill, uh, that should put it out. But I don't know. I've been at my uh, dad's house <clears throat> and he doesn't care for his grill the way I do. And <laughs> meaning I clean the grease out of mine. But there's like a trap underneath your grill. If you look under it and it slides out and it collects grease and you can get like liners for that and be able to take those out and throw them away but if you don't do that often enough and it fills with grease that can catch on fire it can I mean we had a kind of big grill fire one time when my dad was <laughs> had way too much grease everywhere but it did go out and it was out we didn't it wasn't near a structure so it was fine but <clears throat> I would do that take a minute to look and make sure you don't have any grease building up in the bottom of your grill or that thing underneath. But also in the bottom of your oven, um, I keep tin foil underneath and then switch it out occasionally just in case anything drips down in there or like, you know, cookies or <laughs> whatever crumbs get down there. Those can catch on fire. And usually they will just burn and burn out. If you have a crumb, it'll just burn and that's the end of it but you know every now and then you can clean that out that'll help keep fires at bay um i guess i can't think anything else all right well in the comments let me know if you know well one if you have any other thoughts on this but also if you uh have ever had a grease fire like that or have a fun story <laughs> Oh, a fun grease fire story. Well, actually, I kind of thought my neighbor's story of our daughter putting the grease fire in the dishwasher was sort of funny. I wonder if her thinking was she could start the dishwasher if, it, if she had to, like, put it out with water. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't ask a lot of questions. <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. Well... Thanks for watching. I think I might film this same video with a whisper because there are people who like that too. So if you see it in your feed twice, 